Today we're going to talk about uh, water column measurement. Now water column measurement is probably best illustrated by the slack tube manometer. Uh, if I was to put pressure here, it would push this water column down and move this one up and it would read in inches of water column. Uh, this was the original way it was done. They use a colored fluid, which is just water really. Uh, there is a red oil you can use. Um, in my opinion, these things are pretty much uh, antiques. They work. They're not terribly accurate. You have to fill them just right and then you can adjust this thing up and down to get it to the right place where it zeroes out properly. Uh, they do tend to freeze unless you're using red oil. And if you use red oil, you're probably going to have red oil everywhere uh, when you do this. Now we're going to compare this to a couple other of types of manometers. Now this is we're primarily testing for natural gas manifold pressure is what we're doing at this case. Now here's the fairly standard magna helic. Now the magna helic is sort of a clockwork type gauge. It has taps on either side here. Uh, the one of them is low and one of them is high. This one here reads from zero to two inches of water column. Now what we're going to be reading is low fire in a gas furnace, so it'll, this one will still be within its range. Most gas uh, furnaces run about uh, three and a half inches of water column. This would not work for that, but on first stage it will. Uh, these do have to be calibrated each time you use them. They're kind of delicate and they're only good for uh, whatever scale they have. Now we can get these from very small amounts of water column to very large amounts of water column, but you have to buy a different gauge for each one. Another one is this little Ritchie gauge. Now this thing's okay. It's uh, a diaphragm gauge and it reads up to 10 inches water column. Uh, it's a bit delicate too. Uh, I won't say it's the most accurate thing in the world, although if it is uh, cared for reasonably well, it will uh, do the job. The last one is the uh, electronic. Now this is a field piece, and this is an accessory head, and it reads uh, digitally. These are probably the most accurate, although occasionally they do need to be recalibrated. Uh, so this one here, it, it would be my choice. Uh, this one will read very high pressures, very low pressures uh, in water column, and it will take the place of several of these magna helix. Uh, because like I said, I have to have one of these for each one. I'm not real interested in the slack tube manometer because of the problems with using it, uh, such as freezing and, and getting all the measurements just right before you can start it. Potentially this one could be the most accurate. I kind of doubt it, but it does read directly in inches of water column. Okay, what we're going to do here is we are going to check the manifold pressure coming out of this gas valve. Remember, it's coming out here, coming in here, seven to eight inches here, much lower there. This valve is very similar. And if I look on the inlet at this side, it has a pressure tap. However, the pressure tap is not threaded and drilled out so I could not check inlet pressure. The outlet pressure, I do have a pressure tap right here. And I can take this out, put a fitting in here, 
and test the manifold pressure when I fire the appliance. Okay, we're going to read the output pressure to the manifold of this gas valve. Now the manifold's right here, the inlet gas is right here. Inlet gas should be coming in about 7 8 inches of water column. This will be uh, at low fire for this, 1.4, 1.6, somewhere in there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this valve and shut it off. Because I'm going to be opening up this tap. Uh, good idea to go ahead and shut down the uh, furnace, turn the power off to it so it will not start. Okay, we have started the inducer with the slack tube manometer. Uh, we're showing just a little bit of pressure difference. When the inducer came on, hot surface igniter is on, burner should come on uh, momentarily. Okay, it looks like I'm showing about six and a half tenths, um, and that would be 1.3. Okay, we're set up with the Ritchie gauge. Uh, inducer is on, hot surface igniter is on, should be lighting off here. There we are. Uh, and looks like we're right about 1.25. Okay, we've got the Magna Helix set up, showing a little negative pressure. Uh, that's from the inducer coming on. And we should be getting the uh, gas pressure coming on very soon. There it comes. Uh, looks like we are about 1.4 to 1.45 according to the Magna Helix. Okay, here we have the uh, field piece uh, manometer. It's set now to uh, tenths of an inch. It can be set to hundredths of an inch water column and should be coming on here pretty soon. There we go. It's on and it is showing 1.4 inches water column. Uh, it's a little bit different than the others. We've gone from 1.25 to 1.45, but it seems to be pretty much in the same area. Uh, what happens with these valves? The reason I got a negative pressure on both the Dwyer and the uh, uh, well, they're both Dwyer, the Magna Helic and the Slack 2 manometer. Uh, I did not get a negative pressure with the Ritchie gauge because it won't read negative. There's a pin right there. Also, the uh, field piece is not set up at this point to read negative pressure. What has happened, when the inducer comes on here, the inducer pulls a negative on the combustion chamber, which is right here. When it pulls a negative on the combustion chamber, it also pulls a negative in this pipe. So this pipe actually sees a little bit of negative pressure. It doesn't make any difference to your reading. You should still be reading the 1.4 because that's what this appliance wants in low fire. So don't let that think that either this gauge or your uh, slack tube is somehow out of calibration. It is not. It is actually the negative pressure that this inducer pulling down through the heat exchanger is taken on this combustion chamber. 
that's about all for uh, water column measuring devices. We will uh, go a little farther in checking pressure switches later on. Okay, one last thing before we finish up. I'm going to go ahead and shut off my gas. Pull my tap out of here. This gets a little bit of pipe dope on it. I've got a little bit of pipe dope I put on there. It'd be pretty sparing on this pipe dope. Put it back in. Sure it's reasonably tight. Now I'm going to turn my gas back on. Don't forget to turn the gas back on guys. Now I'm firing up the furnace. There's one last thing I got to do whenever you take a anything off of a gas appliance that had gas in it You've got to wait until you've got gas pressure on it. Now my burner just started. That means there's pressure in this line. So I'm going to go over it like this with leak solution. And I'm going to check this thing thoroughly for leaks. And you should be able to see that there are no leaks. Make sure the appliance is operating. One of the last things I want you to do whenever you work on one of these appliances is if there's been any gas uh, that has moved, you've moved any pipes, you've moved the union here, anything like that, leak check it. Also, as a very last test, you can smell around the gas valve. You smell gas, you've got a leak. Uh, these valves occasionally, not so much in this particular valve, but these valve shafts on older gas valves would oftentimes leak. And that's a tough one to tell. If you have an electronic gas leak detector, you can use it, and they are wonderful to use. Uh, they will find the general area of the leak. You'll still have to use something like this old stuff here. Uh, you can use soap solution. Soap solution will work. Uh, but uh, you can check the general area with an electronic and find out if you've got any leaks. And then you can uh, make sure of where the leaks are with your soap.